once every three Man, of the years. other day I was oh yeah it was yesterday I was on I was I was casting the TL open with Andre mm -hmm. and I started to do math on stream and I was like oh god I better not do this but then I nailed it I did perfect math oh. I like square rooted 372 yeah on it stream it was amazing I don't I don't know how I did it I think actually it went down to like three guys beating each other 2-1 and you figuring it out for half an hour. <laughs> like, hmm. No, mm. man, I got it. I was like, oh, Roddy would be so proud of me. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to look up the VODs and we'll see if this is true. Or not. <laughs> it's true, man. <laughs> Some things it. are just too good to believe, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really feel I'm not useful anymore the day you learn how to do basic math. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> I feel that's why I'm your sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> that adding and subtracting, that's, uh, that's hard stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we have Fnatic Knight and being our red Romanian protest player spawning on the right top side here on Antigua Shipyard. And EG Stores ain't one win away from making it into the wild card. And the wild card also means that he still has chances alive to make it to Toronto. This is not all the Starcraft we have for you two guys today as well. We're gonna have Red versus the Muslim. The winner is gonna be a round further. The loser has to play against the winner of this whole three-way tiebreaker. So um, uh, are we going to broadcast that today as well? No, that's not today. No, right? no, no, no. That will actually no. be broadcast tomorrow. Oh, so that's pretty close as well. And then also, last but not least, we're going to have some sick PvP for you guys between Hero and Puzzle. You finally get to cast a PvP, uh, yeah. Kev. I can't believe it. Me neither. Nine <laughs> weeks of gameplay, you've gotten zero PvPs to cast. It's, <laughs> no, it's, it's like cruel and unusual punishment. Kevin, the only guy in the world that <laughs> enjoys watching PvP, <laughs> hasn't gotten to watch any for the past nine weeks. Uh, it wasn't that bad, but yeah, most of them. Sometimes I was really excited and it's like oh yeah Hazu with heroes uh, post until tomorrow so Andre and Frodo uh, Frodo will cast it I was like okay <laughs> 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 it's like the sad okay face <laughs> okay Okay. <laughs> Nighten once more is not gonna I think don't think he's gonna drop the Nexus yet. I love the quick wall off by Torzane. Even if you have nothing to hide, Ben, it's just those few seconds uh of a Protoss play while, uh, where you are insecure. It's like is he really going to expand or if it's actually something uh, funky and certainly certain builds uh, which actually is is sort of common on Antigua Shipyard is the um, Three Heli and eight Marine and a Manavec build, and I think that's personally a build that's very, very hard to defend when you go for any sort of uh, fast expand build. At least, uh, I think it's hard to uh, deal with it properly. It's tough, man. It's very difficult yeah. to split up your army. Uh, I, I mean, especially like uh, like in the limited amount of time I've spent mm -hmm. off racing as Protoss, like in the early phases of the game, you just have so few units, and it mm -hmm. is so hard to say, "All right, I'm going to leave half of you here and half of you there, and mm -hmm. hope for the best." Because I mean, if you if you misallocate that little spread of units and there's a fight somewhere, you're gonna lose everything. Uh, I think this is gonna be very nice for Torz. And Nighten is gonna try to peek in over here. Obviously, he won't be able to do much with the Zealot and the Stalker. But the fact that the bunker is all the way over here still Ooh. leaves Nighten in the dark. Nighten is still on the way. Oh, what are you uh, doing, Nighten? That's so much damage. Sacrificing the Zealot to confirm well. the command center. Okay, this is kind of what I want to say because I know that Nighten is a paranoid, uh, is a paranoid Protoss player. He really, really wants to make sure that the command center is actually there. Some Protoss players, they don't worry all that much. They figure out well doesn't really change much what I see right now. I'm still going to go with whatever I want to go. But Nighthand really wants to get that confirmation that the command center is there. And that's why Torzen was just able to pick up a Zealot, just for the simple fact that uh, yeah, the command center is so far away from the ramp. For instance, on Shakuras, there's no way that Nighthand would have ever lost his Zealot because he would have signed it straight away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the Nighthand just covering all of his bases does see at command center, and unless Thorazane floated his main CC to his natural, <laughs> he is definitely taking an expansion. <laughs> Only Puma would do those buying <laughs> games. <laughs> That's the way that Puma is going to bring 1-1-1 back to fashion. <laughs> Floats <laughs> the <laughs> command center down to the natural, and it's like, okay, he's gone CC first, and the next thing you know, it's uh, it's, uh, it's the all-in coming. Oh, God. That would be so sick, man. Puma is once more going to be the best TVP player in the world. I like the MVP mind games. He, like, takes two SCVs and just yeah. hides them. So it's like, oh, God, I'm getting oh proxy. Oh, no. Ah, no. oh, he's paying attention. Yeah, does watch. Takes a small little burst on the shields, but no, no real damage taken. Thorzane just darting in and out. He's on double racks right now, uh, yeah. producing Marines off of the uh, reactor barracks and, of course, getting stim off yeah. that other one. You think he's going to go for a small push? Yeah, this, the start is the same as in the previous game, but this time he's going to follow it up with a star point. So no ghosts this time for Torsen. and I love how he's switching up his play style. That's very important when you play against mm -hmm. PvT as well. Certainly because I know that most Terran players have quite some troubles right now uh, with Pro Tools. But then mixing up your play style and just throwing him off a little bit, don't make the Pro Tools feel too comfortable about knowing what he's going to face, is really important in the entire process. I'm really pleased with Nighten's play, man. He's paying close attention to his units. He's not losing anything. Going straight up to Colossus once again. 
A nice safe opening. Oh, and he does this time take a burst on that Stalker, but still only shield damage being taken. Oh yeah, took a little bit of damage, but no biggie. We see the robotics base on the way, Ben, as you said, he's once more going to try to open up with Colossus. <laughs> but this time we're going to see Swarp with opening from Torsion, so it's going to play out a little bit different. And I do think that's going to be the small window which Torsion could potentially hit, where Nighten is going to have to do a very good job at splitting up his army. Maybe force mm. you the ramp and have a few Stalkers in the main base, because uh, those two st those two Manifacts are going to be out pretty early. We're going to have Stim, and we all know if Protoss takes 10-15 uh, probe losses, then yeah. it's pretty much curtains for Proto, certainly with this third command center yes. already in the way. So Night is gonna have to defend well, but Night End loves to defend. We know that's what he feels yep. comfortable at. As long as he sees things coming and as long as he knows what to face, he's pretty damn good at defending. He's a, a very sit back and we'll see kind of player. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all he's doing just like, like at the moment. Thorzane may be uh, playing to that, knowing Night End's style a little bit, getting that very fast third command center. Night End will scout it with yep. this observer going to spout these uh, these both refineries as well, so Torsen is going to have a pretty uh, uh, decent gas income from now. But he then he's also going to realize that Torsen probably outmined him quite a bit up to this point. Take a look at the army supply, we see 37 for Torsen, and yes, that's an army with Stim, plus one is almost ready as well. Uh, by the time everything is on the other side of the map, Ooh, oh the no, Stalker took a, took a wrong turn and takes a lot of damage, ends up getting yep. taken out. Uh, Stim is there. Wow. Stim is just a handful of Marines there. I'm super surprised that Nighton is already dropping this Nexus van. Yeah, uh, trying to take a little bit of a risk there after seeing the third command center. Wow. And if Thorzane sees it, and of course he will yeah. see it, look at this guy, Usain Bolt, stims and runs in there and says, oh, command center sp or Nexus spotted. Oh, but and instead uh, Thorzane's going to drop the main, but Nighton still had uh, his stalkers there. Actually, he only has three, no, he has six stalkers. That should be enough. Man, he is really spreading these units out. I don't um, understand, because Thorzane could just literally expand this Nexus, uh, attack this Nexus and kill it. Oh, the Observer was very well positioned on top of those medevacs. So Nighten is at least aware that Thorzane wants to drop. Um, but upon seeing that yeah. and stimming and killing that Observer, I'm sorry, scanning and killing yeah. that Observer, Thorzane might just poke up here and take out this Nexus. How crazy is this that, uh, that Nighten dropped that expanse and is still able to uh, protect all three yeah. bases at once? How crazy th is it that Thorzane doesn't commit to anything? Yeah. Like I, I, surely if he had gone immediately, he would have been able to cancel this Nexus. No, I feel that he waited a little bit too long. Nighton still has these six stalkers, so I wouldn't upload units and drop them in the main base. He's not going to do that. Torsen right now just containing Nighton a little bit. We can see the third orbital is already in its place. Uh, but yeah. Ooh, Torsen is going to go for it up into the main base, unloads those units, and there's a lot of stalkers here. And I don't know that Thorson's going to do that much damage, but I don't think he wants to do that much damage. It's just Whoa. a diversion, Kev. The Nexus is taking huge damage in the third base, and beautiful snipe there by Thorzane. He's going to lift up and get out of there, losing only Whoa. two Marines. So Thorzane took his time, man, but that was very, very well calculated. Beautiful play here by Look the Swedish these two general. Marines. Where were they? They were behind enemy lines, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to make it way back. <laughs> Well, I don't even know what kind of medal I should give them. Where did they come from? Give them a purple heart and... I uh, think they were part of the, like, the drop and then the <laughs> medevac uh, kind of had to leave. He, he lost one of the two medevacs. So I, I was looking at that because I really wanted to know if he would have lost one of those two medevacs. But during all that, he went for the multi-prong aggression. Beautiful play by Torsen. But yeah. he also did end up losing quite a few units there. Nighten's response is going to be to counterattack, and it could be a good one. He's got 53 uh. supply, but it's a scary 53 supply. Two colossi, a few sentries. Thorzane's got only marine marauder. Well, I yeah, should say As soon as those uh, colossus die, those colossus are in kind of a tricky position right now. Already taking a few Viking hits. Oh. Force field's going down. Force field's trapping a couple of Nighten's own stalkers. Thorzane's taking a big supply well, lead, Kev. Thorzane is playing this so well. He's just doing everything right. He, he really is, and he's playing so no. fast, cruising no. along. Those are the two Marines, man. Man, what happened to No Man Left Behind? <laughs> Maybe they can come back as a zealot. And they told me it was over after this mission. Do you think <laughs> when you die, you can like be reincarnated as a, a different race's unit? Like, if you're a Marine, could you come back as an immortal? No, maybe you r get reincarnated by the unit that you were killed by. <laughs> like, if you're a medevac and you, and you get shot down by a queen, you come back as, like, a defiler? Yeah, I guess that's very well possible, Ben. I don't, don't know, know what I can say <laughs> about this. I, listen, I believe in reincarnation. We've been through this. <laughs> yes. I was a fighter pilot. Uh, no, I don't want to hear it. I was, man. I was the Red Baron. I don't want to hear it. story It's a again. true story. I don't want to hear it. I was. <laughs> stop, stop sharing no, my your My mom story. tells me this story all the time. When I was a little kid, when I was like three years old, I would tell her about how I got shot down <laughs> flying my fighter plane in, in the war. Yes. And I would explain the plane in vivid detail and... When I you were three years old. Yeah, and then when I was like five, I stopped telling those stories because, I don't know, I just 
it just like phased out of my brain. But All right, it's true, Dan. man. I was the Red Baron. We see a lot of <laughs> upgrades. I'm just going to ignore this story from now on. <laughs> we see a lot of upgrades going down <laughs> for night end. Hallucination and 2 2 upgrades are on the way as well. But the main problem is this army of Torsen in the middle of the map. This is a substantial Terran army 11 Vikings, 12 Marauders, 45 yeah, Marines. It really is. I love this Terran army, Ben, and I feel kind of worried about the Protoss army on the other side. There's a 40 supply deficit. Four Colossi in the army. They have the potential to do some serious damage, but with this many Vikings out, it's going to be hard. Uh, See no another drop going yet. on in the main base of Nighten as well, and there's not a single unit in the main base of Nighten. Oh, this is going to difficult. hurt. Yeah, a couple of Zealots going to be warped in, but I don't think there's any charge. Nope, there's uh, not. Which means they're going to have a hard time just closing the gap, and they're going <laughs> to they're going to hit this Marauder, and he's going to live forever. Man. You not never pick a fight with the big kid, Kev. It's no. just not a good idea. <laughs> oh, look. Yeah, he's even uh, protected. <laughs> kid, big kid has protection. Right? Yep. A couple probes going to get picked off here. Thorzane just making the most of this drop. He's going to let everything everything die. He says these guys have done their job. Maybe they'll come back as Colossi. Or the Red Baron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colossus being hallucinated. That's going to help out quite a bit. Thorzane uh, does not have true vision here or doesn't have detection. Oh, so but as it happens, he's picking off all of the actual Colossi. Thorzane somehow just knows. And uh, every unit does melt away. Nighten's entire army evaporating. Viking's going to be landed. This third base is definitely going to fall. Beautiful, yeah. very well executed play here by Thorzane. Multi pronged aggression all game long. Macroing like a champ, his money never getting up over a thousand. Excellent play here from Thorzane. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, forward blink into all these thin marauders that can't end well. He had a few zealots as well, but these marauders have way too much DPS for this Protoss army to deal with. Knight and says GG well played, and Thorzane wins this three way tiebreaker. Excellent play by Thorzane, not dropping a single, single map. map. He's going to go on to play against the loser of Rhett versus the Muslim. That's the game that we're going to cast next. And that's going to be a really big one, guys. That's a classic as well. These two guys have been friends for a very long time, have played against each other in a ton of tournaments, and now they are in a very important best of three. The winner of that advances around. The loser gets one round earlier in the bracket, so that means that the loser has to play Torzin. And if you lose against Torzin, Ben, it's also over. Yep. So <laughs> a little it's deja, tough, man. a little deja vu, a little trivia. In season two of the NASL finals, uh, the Muslim had a very good season, but he had to play against the winner of the open bracket, which was Torzain. And Torzain defeated the Muslim three Ooh. to nothing in the first round of the playoffs. Oh man, the Muslims had a great season here. He he we definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> wants to. Oh, oh, this just in. <laughs> me and my previous life. Look, that, that this kind of resembles me a little. <laughs> that guy looks very Russian, man. I don't he, know. he was German, fighter pilot in World War One. That was me in a previous life. I'm glad that you're so proud of your previous life as a fighter pilot, man. I, s you know, it's I was probably like a human rights activist. <laughs> no, man, <laughs> you were, you were, uh, you started PETA in a previous life. What? PETA. What is that? PETA's like the people that like are all animal, animal rights activists. Well, well, no, that's possible. So, like, you're, you're, you're the person that like runs into stores that sell fur coats and like splashes red paint <laughs> on them. <laughs> yeah, I would do it. <laughs> oh. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we're gonna take a small commercial break, and then we'll be right back with Red versus the Muslim. Stay tuned. I'm excited. Ben, are you excited? I'm always excited. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> 